What is up, Taylor's Valley Baptist Church students? So we are here uh, this week in my office, or really just my corner of it. Um, you know, I got my little desk stuff. I really, oh, if I had a cubicle, that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, we are here. And uh, uh, this week, uh, well, first, let me recap. Uh, over the past couple weeks, we've been looking at these habits of Jesus. Um, the first week, we looked at prayer um, and how Jesus prayed and why and how, how we um, should kind of should imitate that um, as followers, disciples of Jesus. Um, last week, we looked at uh, service and how, how we as Christians, how we, we ought to serve one another, how we ought to love one another um, and demonstrate that, you know, through our service. And, and this week, we're going to be we're going to be talking about something pretty related to that, which is giving. Um, and we, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, kind of uh, at the at the story in the Gospel of Mark of, of the widow's offering. And, uh, and how this widow um, gave all that she had, um, and, and Jesus, Jesus commended her for that. Um, yeah, and so I'm super excited for this. I think this is a, an amazing lesson, um, especially in kind of in today's culture, um, where everybody has smartphones and um, you know, things like that, which, you know, in social media, which um, sometimes we don't, we don't use in a, in a very good way. Um, but yeah, so uh, for announcements, um, hey, we are back up and running with our Sunday morning life groups. Um, this past Sunday was absolutely awesome. I had a great time um, in that life group. And uh, so hopefully, you know, as, as things kind of begin to get back to some kind of normal, um, you know, I look forward to getting to see more and more of you guys on a regular basis. Um, so, yeah. And then also the uh, second big announcement which I think I announced last week um, is that Heather and I we are we are planning the uh, the disciple now sort of weekend for um, for uh, the youth ministry the preteens um, and we are so looking forward to that and that's going to be February 26th through the 28th we're going to have we're going to be sending out more and more information um, as we get closer to that um, so yeah so let's uh, let's dive into. Uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. I'll go ahead and read this. Um, it's just, this is the story of Jesus. He's, he's at the temple. Um, all of these different groups of people, they are coming to Jesus. They are, uh, you know, they're um, asking him different questions. Jesus is responding, things like that. Um, and, uh, and where we pick up in verse 38, um, Jesus, Jesus, this is picking up kind of on a new sort of teaching. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm ready to go. Go on ahead and read at Mark chapter 12, verse 38 through 44, and then uh, begin the video again. So, yeah. So um, the first first kind of thing that we can take out of this passage about, um, or at least I think that we can, um, about, you know, how how. You know, this kind of calls us and changes us to to live out our lives. And, ha and talking about giving, um, the first thing is that Jesus desires for us to be generous from our hearts. Um, I want you guys to think about a time uh, in which you have noticed somebody doing a religious action that, that didn't line up with what they said or with what they believed, um, or at least what you, you thought that they believed. Um, or maybe, maybe... You know, and this is a lot easier for myself. I mean, maybe think of a time in, in your own life in which you have, you have acted in a uh, hypocritical way. Um, you know, I've, I've had a bunch of times uh, when I have been a hypocrite in my own life and I've failed um, in, in how uh, I'm called to live. And I know that I'm called to live. Um, and, and I think that, that a lot of this, that's probably pretty relatable. I think that most Christians have at some time or, or another in their walks with Christ gotten caught up kind of in the cycle of, of sin and, and hypocrisy, and maybe you have it, and that's okay. Like that's great. Like I'm not saying go out and be hypocrites or anything like that. Um, but I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to. Now, um, I think back to, to high school a lot, where I would go to youth group every Wednesday, and I would go to church every every Sunday, and I would serve in a bunch of different areas in the church, and generally. And I was in Boy Scouts and all that. And generally people, people from my church, uh, you know, they, they knew me as this 
good Christian kid. And they, they thought that I was such a fantastic person, but they, they didn't know all of the things that, that I was doing outside of the church. And, and it caused me to, to lie um, and hide my true self really from others. Um, and I did that to uh, protect my, my own image um, that, that other people had of me. And I was so worried about protecting this, this personal image in front of my church family that, you know, that I would do whatever it was that I could in order to hide that, to cover it up. Um, and what, and I hid it, I hid my hypocrisy. And uh, now oftentimes, you know, doing that, it would just make me feel even worse about being a hypocrite, which, you know, that would then make me feel bad. And then I would, uh, just want to sin even more and then I would be even more of a hypocrite and then the cycle it would just continue on and on and on and um, you know and eventually it gets broken but um, we we see some interesting things in the story of the widow's offering about how how we ought to give to other people in a, in a way that honors and glorifies God um, and in the story we see Jesus he's standing in the temple he's warning everybody about the Jewish teachers and the and religious leaders, um, these these people they were they were supposed to be helping people and instead they were they were hypocrites and they actually made other people's lives worse. Um, they they stole from the widows, um, from the poor of the society who didn't have anywhere else to turn to, and and then they they covered uh, these awful things up by pretending to be religious and and holy. Um, and righteous in front of others. So that way everybody else would think really good of them. Um, and they were just elevating their themselves. Uh, you know, these people, they were supposed to, they were supposed to exemplify, you know, how to live a life living according to God's word, how to live in a right relationship with God. They were supposed to be generous to the people of Israel. They were supposed to give money and take care of the widows in the Israelite society. But instead we see, we see in, uh, in verse 38, uh, we see how, or verse 38 through 40, that, that these religious teachers, they, they love to masquerade um, as these really good people. We, we see that they, they cheated these widows out of their money, and they pretend to be really good and holy people. And, you know, Jesus warns against this act of pretending to be generous and holy. And he, uh, he, comm- he commends the widow who was generous, and she gave everything that she had. Um, and uh, yeah, and this this widow really, I think, exemplifies this kind of generosity and sincerity and sacri- self sacrificial uh, living that we are called to to live out, you know, in our own lives as as members of the kingdom of God. Um, you know, I don't I don't think that Jesus is is interested in us pretending to be these super good and holy people, and we see this over and over again in the Gospels um, in Matthew. Chapter six, verse two, um, in the Sermon on the Mount, we uh, we find Jesus. He's uh, he's commanding those who follow him to to uh, to go and to give to other people generously, not for the praises of, of other people or you know to make themselves look like these amazing, incredible people, but instead to give to other people in secret. Um, this this is what it looks like to to live as members of the kingdom of God. Um, there there's a lot of times you know. Um, I, I see a lot of videos, they, they do irritate me um, in, in a way, and, and part of that is just me being judgmental, and I shouldn't automatically do that. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of videos that float around on the internet now of, um, of people who they will, you know, be holding their, uh, their phone up, and they will go and uh, record themselves giving money to a homeless person. Um, or, uh, you know, or if somebody, uh, sees a wreck, a car wreck on a highway, they will instantly pull out their phone, uh, record what they're doing and they will run up to that wreck and they'll just jam their phone in these people's face, uh, in the face and these people's faces. Um, and, and they'll just record themselves like helping to pull these people up. Um, and, and a lot of times, I mean, I, I, I think, again, I think that I, I look down on that a lot, um, but I think that this could be a modern day kind of parallel of that, of, of the religious teachers and the scribes. Um, you know, whenever you have some, some really, um, you know, wealthy person going out and pulling out their phone 
and you know and recording themselves giving the money to uh, to say a homeless person um, they and then they go and they post it all over social media and you know and you might go and get a whole bunch of likes and all of that but um, but it's it's kind of it's just propping yourself up. Um, it's not, you know, it's not done just out of a, out of a sincere love for your neighbor. It's not done out of, um, sheer, just generosity to people. Um, and I think, and I think that a lot of that, that's, that's kind of why, like Jesus is commanding, um, his followers to people who, who want, who choose to follow him, um, to, to give to other people in secret. So that way, so that way we aren't going and, you know, glorifying ourselves through it um so yeah jesus jesus cares about our motivations he cares about our desires he cares about what's what is in our heart um and how we live that out um so yeah and this this what jesus is talking about in the sermon on the mount and in mark uh, chapter 12 i mean this i think this is a lot of what it looks like to live as members of the kingdom of god here on earth um so my second point through this is that um, as as followers of Christ, like we um, we are called to be generous to other people. Um, now, if we read First John three sixteen, not not the gospel, but First John the letter, First uh, John three sixteen through nineteen, we see we see a verse with a passage with a very similar idea behind it to what we see here in the widow's offering, um, and it says that. That we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. Um, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and our sisters. Um, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister uh, sees his brother um, in need, but but shows no compassion. I'm sorry, I, I messed that up. Um, and then, but it continues on. How can God's love be in that person? Uh, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Um, and, and in this, we, we see um, the John um, writing to these Christians and telling them that, you know, that, that, that we're supposed to be generous um, to other people um, and to, uh, to other Christians as well. Um, we see that just as Jesus gave up his his life you know, for the whole world, that we are also called to to imitate to embody Jesus' self sacrificial love in our relationships with uh, with each other and outwards um, to each other to other people. Um, yeah, and the the story of the widow and her offering is an absolutely amazing example of this because this woman she gave up everything that she had um, in a way uh, to you know she was she was kind of giving up herself for other people. Um, she was she was risking her own well being in order to be generous. I mean, this this widow she might not uh, she might not have had. Uh, I mean, it says that she had, she had given everything that she had to live for, and you know she might not have exactly known when she was going to get more money coming in. Um, you know, she she might not have had enough money after that to um, to uh, go out and buy food or to get the things that she needed to live. And yet she still, she still gave that. Um, and that, that is a kind of a, uh, self-sacrificial giving of, of oneself. Uh, you know, Jesus, he watched this and he, uh, he saw how she was giving, not in a way that glorified herself. You know, she wasn't doing this for praise from the people around her, um, but she was acting generously out of her heart. And, you know, I think that Jesus is far, far more con, uh, concerned and interested in the contents of our heart and how we love and serve other people. Uh, I think that he's a lot more interested in all that than in how we're, we, you know, than how we go and puff ourselves up and make her fit, you know, make ourselves feel really good, pat ourselves on the back, um, you know, for, for doing good things. Um, I think that he, he is much more, much more concerned about our, our motivations um, and how we're actually living this out in our lives. So when, when you guys give to people and to serve them, I mean, don't, don't do it with selfish ambitions that, or motivations that make yourselves look better than everybody. Um, don't, don't do it with those purposes. Don't sit there and pull out your phone and, 
begin recording yourself giving away money to, to homeless people or something like that. Um, just give to them through sincere generosity out of a genuine love for that person. Just, you know, just as Christ gave himself up for the world. Um, so, yeah, so uh, kind of, kind of in ending this, um, there last kind of point is that there's, there are many ways I think in which to give, I'm not just limited to money and I'm going to try to focus on, on other kind of ways of giving besides money, just cause you know, I recognize that y'all are students. I was, I was a high school student not long ago. Um, and you know, I've also been a broke college student for a long time. Um, you know, and I, so I don't know if any of you guys have gotten jobs or, you know, or a real source of income outside of, you know, just, uh, uh, like birthday money or just some kind of a uh, allowance. But um, most of the time you guys simply don't have money to, to just give away to others. And I understand that. Um, but I, I also don't think that that um, absolves us of the need to, to give and to be generous um, in, in how we live our lives. And I think, especially going back to last week that, um, that, when we are we're called to give, like we aren't just just called to to give up our money. I mean, we I think that we're we're called to to really to uh, to give ourselves up for other people. Um, a really awesome way that that I heard this said in a podcast a couple of months ago um, is that just as Jesus Christ, uh, just as His body was broken for us on the cross and His blood was poured out for us. Like we as, as disciples of Christ, we're to go out into the world and pour ourselves out for others. Uh, we're to, uh, to give ourselves up in, in serving other people. Um, you know, now this, this act of giving, it can, it can fit into a bunch of different contexts. I mean, maybe it, it is going out and, uh, you know, giving up your time and helping out in the food bank here at Taylor's Valley. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you can only do that in the summer, um, or, you know, just whenever you're able to, um, or maybe it is, you know, helping organizations and clothing, clothing drives or food drives that can help to feed and clothe homeless or impoverished people. Maybe it's, it's giving up some of your time and, uh, and your own image, um, to go and spend time with, with the kid in your school that's picked on or bullied by others. Um, loving your neighbor is as God's called us to, uh, is, I think a lot of us, it's to live generously um, and to serve other people with our lives, not just with our wallets. Um, and yeah, I think that, that serving and giving to other, uh, you know, other people, people who are in need, I mean, that, that is a central component of what it looks like to, to follow Christ. Um, you see throughout the Gospels, throughout the New Testament, um, all of these stories of people um, just, I mean, give, certainly giving giving money, but um, also of giving of their time, giving up their lives, giving their service um, to to their fellow uh, people. Um, and that that's awesome. Um, I love being able to look out, uh, you know, and to hear stories um, of groups, organizations, or people who, who are just going out into the world and making an actual difference. Um, not again, not, not out of a, uh, you know, self, you know, self promoting kind of way, but, but in a way that, that really glorifies God and is, and is done just how we love for, uh, for other people, people who are in need. Um, and, uh, yeah. And so, um, you know, throughout this, you know, maybe immediately whenever you are done watching this, um, I, I want you guys to, to think about uh, tangible ways in which you can serve other people around you right now. Um, now, I want you guys to, to actually think of people that you know um, and think of actual concrete actions that you can take in order to, to serve those people um, and to, to share the love of Christ with those people. Um, I don't, I don't want it to just be in some, you know, imaginary vague kind of thing, or, you know, like a Sunday school answer, um, or for you guys to just, you know, think of imaginary people to serve. But I mean, I want you to really think about serious, real, actual ways that you can love and serve those around you for God's glory. Um, so, uh, yeah. And I, and I know that, that students are capable of so much, 
um, in the way of uh, serving and of giving, um, pop, you know, maybe even a lot more than you guys have ever known or have heard about. Um, so, yeah, uh, I want you guys to, to think about that, um, you know, as, when you watch this video or uh, especially over this next week and how you can serve and better love uh, your neighbors. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. And, uh, yeah, so Father God, we are so thankful for um, just for everything that you do in our lives. Um, Father, we are, we are thankful that um, that Jesus came here and he uh, gave himself up for us, that, that you, Father, would come down in Jesus and would give yourself up for us. Um, Father, we are, we are so thankful for that. Um, Father, help us, uh, help us to see uh, the world with with fresh eyes. Uh, Father, help us to to love the broken people around us, to to serve those who who uh, who nobody else wants to serve. Father, help us to give to the needy and to to give ourselves up for the kingdom of God and for Your glory. Um, Father, we are we are so thankful. Uh, for the work that you are doing in these students' lives. Father, help them to be, uh, help all of us to be growing nearer to you each day, to be um, growing uh, in, in our faith and our love for you and our love for our neighbors. Um, Father, just, again, we are so thankful. Uh, Father, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. Your son's name, pray. Amen. Okay, right, guys, I will see you all either on Saturday or not Saturday, Sunday. Okay.